My name is Paul Barron. This is Tech Path. Let's go into Shanghai and the auto show because it is a breakneck release day and week. We're dropping videos left and right of all of these, all of these new cars, and this is both American-made cars, Chinese-made cars, Japanese-made cars, all dropping in Shanghai right now, right there on the coast of China, uh, around what was, and I think some pent-up demand for the automotive industry to kind of start moving in this direction. But Hong Guang, which was the number two selling vehicle, electric vehicle in China behind Tesla for 2020, has dropped a new vehicle called the Mini EV Cabrio Concept, the Freze Froggy. That's actually the name of this thing. It's the Freze Froggy. Let me go into this. They presented this Mini EV Concept basically uh, from Leonard F. Yankovic, which will pay true uh, tribute to the VW Froggy he created back in 1993. So basically he uh, was the founder of the Freze. Uh, this I like. Uh, I like these homages and this whole play on, you know, just having fun in this space. I think you can go a little too far on this. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, but overall, the idea is how do you displace Tesla from the number one selling? Because this year Tesla's probably going to double up again in China, going from about 130,000 vehicles to maybe 200. 50,000, a quarter of a million. Uh, so everybody's chasing Tesla right now, including BYD, NEO, you name it, Xpeng, et cetera. Hong Guang is right on their tail, of course, as the leader. Uh, the electric brand belongs to Darts, which will soon sell the Necrob EV as the most affordable EV in Europe. So they're breaking into these other markets right now, which I think is a really good thing because Xpeng has done a great job in Europe around breaking into countries like uh, Norway. Norway is the big one. Uh, and also Germany. Uh, so the fact that the Necrob is going into um, EV, uh, into Europe as the most affordable EV, big deal, because there are some heavy competitors in Europe for the EV business. Still one of the largest uh, adoption rate areas regionally or uh, geographically in the world uh, when you look at the tightness of that market across all of the European uh, Union, whether it's uh, Norway, Switzerland, um, and then also Germany and even the UK. This is a big market for the globe, and it's obviously why you know Tesla and uh, many of the Chinese automakers are dropping in um, these cars. But obviously Tesla with Giga Berlin going live is right, they're gonna be in the mix. So we're gonna see a lot of this kind of moving in that direction. But at the same time, you're dealing with Volvo and also VW in that market. So a lot having, heading in that direction. A dealership network for this brand is already being developed and that the company will probably create charging stations as well. So they're going the direction of almost every other EV maker, which is kind of creating these islands out there. I wonder how far this is gonna go with companies like Rivian, Tesla, Porsche, Mercedes, pretty much everybody that's gonna have their own charging network. I just don't necessarily get that. At some point, we're gonna need that unification of uh, EVs and to get out of our own way on this whole charging scenario. And I think the consumers will help drive that. So hopefully that is gonna happen. Wuling Hongguang with the mini EV Cabriolet concept will be sold in Europe with a larger battery pack offered uh, to the affordable EV uh, and with about 13.8 kilowatts. So that's good. It's going to be uh, LFP cells, another good thing. Seb to present around a 200 kilometer NEDC range, which is not very good. Just so you know, that's way below the EPA ranges, which a 200 kil uh, kilometer NEDC range would be jumping to 124 miles of uh, range, you know, you know, with the uh, US, you know, range comparison. The top takes less than five seconds to completely retract, uh, where the conventional mini EV has its rear seats. So it's basically going to that Cabriolet style for the two seater, very similar, I would think, to kind of like the Golf or the Jetta or any of those uh, convertible Cabriolets that VW was so, you know, good at producing. Uh, so we'll see, you know, I like the fact that they've kind of done this. Uh, the Yankovic expects to be able to sell it for around uh, 20 grand uh, Europe, uh, Europe uh, the Euro, which is 24K, uh, costing about twice as much as the Freze Necrob EV entry level version. So, again, another big advantage if you're looking at low cost vehicles, which is a big deal in Europe. And if this is a market that they're targeting, which it is, I, I think this could um, be very interesting uh, in a very big way, depending on when they release it, because there's going to be a lot of competition in Europe for this. The good thing is that everybody's winning on this. The consumers are winning because we've seen so much innovation in the automotive. The thing is, is that we're seeing automotive innovation coming from the non 
you know, industry and non-legacy brands, which I think is going to really, in a way, kind of get the market a little muddy in the sense of consumers trying to figure out which way to go. At the end of the day, range is going to win, price is going to win, and I think brand is going to win as we start to see these things kind of break out. But this is going to be one of the cheapest convertible cars for sale in Europe and one of the only two options that will be available. So that in itself is going to be an advantage. The other one is the Smart uh, 4.2 Cabrio, which sells for 25, or 25 euros, uh, 25,000 euros in Germany. Uh, so that's basically your competition. So I think they're targeting maybe slicing out a part of the European auto market from an EV standpoint that people want these, uh, you know, those Cabriolets, these convertibles that are really kind of cool. And we'll see how this one uh, pulls out, uh, how the mini EV Cabriolet concept can hold its own in Europe. Okay, so you're listening to this over on the podcast. This was a short one. That's okay. You're probably seeing a ton of these flow through your feed right now. This is a good time to jump over to the YouTube channel and subscribe over there. If you're watching us on YouTube, as I said earlier, we have dropped a ton of Shanghai Auto Show, show drops, hopefully giving you guys a quick review of what's happening and what's coming at you in the EV space. Make sure and like the video and also uh, give us a thumbs up and also give us some comments down here. Tell us what you'd like to see here on the show. If you want to use email, you can send us a, an email that way too. If you don't want to do it in public, uh, but send us a, a note to producer at rebernetworks.com or you can hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. I'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.